to return from break during the break I had to stop the recording because I can't do this while the recording is running so I'm going to hopefully this has been working for the last two or three minutes so I'm hoping it's going to continue working so I can demonstrate to you what the final product looks like and then we're going to look at how to build this um, what you're looking at are two Android emulators that are loaded and one emulator is on port 5556 I can tell from the top of the emulator window which port it's on this one's a 5554 they're both talking to each other through SMS messaging, which is the next topic that we're going to do. We're going to build an SSM application. Um, I have actually uh, been able to send to other devices outside of this. However, I'm not quite sure if it's going to work um, with these emulators. Um, so you can install this on your phone, and it should work through your SMS, through your cellular service to be able to call to another phone. Um, I have done that with these examples and it does work as fine as well. So what we're doing here is we're observing the behavior between the two emulators. If over here is an example when the application loads up, um, actually here I can take this one. Oh look, I got the help me. It finally did come through. So if I click on the messages, messages themselves, um, oops, let's just back out because it's easier to back out of it right now. This may actually crash on me momentarily, along with the recording. So let's see. And my network is, seems to be going down as well. Uh, so let's see what's going on here. Okay, so when the application first loads up, you press on the send button. This is the SSM demo application, by the way. And I'm going to send a message to this emulator over here. So what you're typing in, if you want to test it, emulator to emulator is the port number. So if I type in 555. Oops, that's a four. Hold on one second. Five, 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 four. <laughs> and I put the message down on the bottom down here. I'm going to say, if I can actually type the message in here. This is running as a snail because I have two emulators running along with my recording software. But I'm typing in um, from live lecture from live Oh, that's okay. We'll just put in something here. My lecture, 11.34. That's right. We'll just misspell it. That's fine. It's working. We'll just do it here. 11.34. There we go. If I press the send button, as soon as it figures out, oh, there we go. It will run a little bit faster on, faster on your, your device as well. I should receive it over here. I have received it. In fact, it says live from live. This is the message I just sent a few minutes ago. You see, it comes through the notification. We're going to have another tutorial that's after this one, probably not to be till after lunch, that will go through and demonstrate the notifications for you and broadcast messages. And using content providers is what kind of the theme for the rest of today. But long story short, this app picked it up. There's a receiver in the app that says, listen for the notifications when a new text message comes in, pick it up, put it in my app. So the app intercepted the broadcast message that came through from the notification, picked it up. Instead of the default text message program opening up, this one opened up because this app is opened up and this app is at, at this point right now configured to work back and forth so now I can reply to this message however I don't think that the pressing on the message itself is going to work because I don't have that part programmed into this example <laughs> you actually have to use the text on the bottom oh wow because I clicked on it it's going to go away um, now it's picking up the I don't want to call that number what happens if I call it? Yeah, no, it's not going to necessarily uh, perform the way I'm going to have it perform. Uh, so if I type in a message here, this one is sending it to this one over here because in the beginning I have set up, and uh, the one of the things here is that the text message demo here is kind of crude. In order to change the address you're sending it to, you actually have to skip back to the beginning to click the send button to actually put the address in. Otherwise, it will keep the text that you put in there for the next message. You can only send one to the other. Until Instead, you have to exit out back out here and put another number in here. You can make this so it goes to your address book 
or something. Um, you could make it work just like other text messaging applications, but this is an app that you're building yourself or will be building yourself in a few minutes that uh, will essentially uh, perform uh, the same functions as a regular text messaging app. Um, so down here I'm going to put here from hello terribly frustrating because it runs so slowly. I'm just glad it's actually running. Yeah, I could just leave it on the default, but from me over here. Just whatever comes into there in a few minutes. <laughs> I'm going to press send as soon as it gets done thinking for itself. <laughs> so, uh, over, okay, just continue. That's perfect. I'll just press send and let's see what happens. It is very slow because I have two. Now, see, it says sending, so you can actually see it, and then it'll say the sent time sent. And then it should show up in the notification, and then it gets populated to the list because it's pulling it from the notice for the broadcast message that's coming in. If you load this on a real device, you should be able to send as long as you've got the correct area code and correct number. It should use your text messaging service to actually send back and forth. Um, the other option that you might do, this is going to take a few minutes, actually. It may or may not show up over here. I think this one over here is having problems. <laughs> the other thing that you can do, if I have your attention again, is use the uh, tools that are available for you in the DDMS to send messages uh, to and also in, simulate telephone calls, text messaging, and all sorts of different things that you can do. If you click on the emulator control tab, by default, I believe you're probably going to be on threads and there's nothing in there or heap or something, but there's tabs on the top. Click on emulator control. And at the top, you see the telephony services. And on the bottom, if you don't put anything in here, nothing is highlighted. You actually have to put a number in here. The number you're putting in here, again, is the port number. So I'm going to send to this guy over here because he seems to be working. This is the 5554. So 5554. Oh, look, did it make it? I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to send one to this guy over here because he's up and running. And I'm going to send here, help me <laughs> send a message. <laughs> and when I click on send, this device over here should receive it. And I'm going to see on the bottom the status of, uh, oops, no, this guy thinks. Okay, so this guy thinks he's now 5554. <laughs> so it's okay. Because that's the message I just sent in a few minutes. Help me send a message. I know. Send it to 5556. This probably is, is going to get it. So let's just send the send message. Oh, actually, let me change the message slightly. The incoming number that's going to receive the message is going to be the one that's going to... I'm, going to, I'm sending this to this incoming number. So help me again. <laughs> Watch this guy get it. Unless this guy thinks he's both, which is possible. Yeah, he thinks he's both right now. So. The emulators are having memory issues, by the way. So They're, they can't wait to be closed. I can't wait to close them either. Um, but what we're looking at is the ability to test through the DDMS, which is another feature that you might want to consider using. Um, you can also, believe it or not, simulate latitude and longitude. So we haven't gotten there yet. However, if you go down to the bottom where it says location controls, you can load up a map. So on April 14th, we're going to actually, or 13th, whatever the weekend is, 14th, we're going to look at the mapping programs because it's changed significantly, especially at the end of the month it will change again. So that the older old map key, the way of getting a map key has changed. So I have to change this tutorial that I'm going to give you. Otherwise, I'm going to show you the old way, and I don't want to show you the old way. However, if you're working on the assignments and you're able to get the map key yourself and able to work on it on your own, you can simulate the map by changing the longitude and latitude location through the DBMS, excuse me, through the DDMS as well, by communicating with the emulator and telling the emulator it's moved to a different location. How do you know the longitude and latitude? You just go online and get the longitude and latitude for a location. There's a million websites that do that. And what you're looking at, two numbers, you stick the two numbers in here, you pull up the map that you're going to simulate and set it. Otherwise your longitude and latitude will be set on zero, zero, and you're not going to get your map functionality. It's not going to work. You can also simulate, I forgot to mention, you can also simulate a telephone call. 
a voice call through here. You're going to be working through the audio speakers. It's really the phone's going to ring. So if I send it here, I can call the emulator, which is going to be 5556. You can see on the bottom, my default emulator program should be picking up. But I don't, oh, here it is, an incoming call. <laughs> so I've got an incoming call, but I can't answer it because I don't have a, I didn't create an app to answer it. <laughs> So it's going to be picked up by the default program. So does it think I'm communicating? I don't know. Deployed in call screen. It's setting up the call for me actually. So, but again, up. Oh, look at that. Let's answer it. Incoming call from five 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 six. It's a little bit slow. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Are you there? <laughs> Uh, where's the speakerphone? Hello? No. Hello? No, you're not working. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. All right, well, I'm just going to hang up this call. But it did simulate an incoming call. Why do you want to do that? Because you're building an app that's going to intercept. You're building Google Voice as an example. Call comes through. You want to intercept the call. So your app's going to do the same thing that this text messaging program is doing. Intercept the incoming notification that comes through. Hey, you got a text message. What am I going to do with the text message? Well, load it up in my app. I don't want to use the text message program that's on the phone. I want to use mine. So Google Voice does the same thing, but it's voice over IP, and it picks up the incoming call. And it says, load up the Google Voice app. And then we can talk on the phone using voice over IP instead of using your cellular minutes. So that's the way that they're making the cellular number work for the voice over IP contact. They're just writing an app, essentially, that intercepts the notification. So now that I have talked for a minute, nine minutes, <laughs> hanging up my call, now uh, my, ha my happy emulators are going to go away. Actually, this one, I'll cut this one down. So this one's still up and running. This one actually was happier running. So now all of a sudden my computer's running a little bit faster. I did get two incoming messages, though. Let's see. Uh, all right. So actually right now at this point, I'm going to close this emulator because it, my computer's fan will stop running in a few minutes. And, uh, everybody will be happier. So the examples that I'm going to go over, see, everything's running much faster already. It's nice. <laughs> I have not had any luck testing this with the VirtualBox emulators, which is why I loaded up two of the Android built-in emulators to do this with. The VirtualBox will not communicate with the Android emulators. The VirtualBox will communicate, however, with the log and the DDMS. I could send, if I loaded it, which I'll do now, on my virtual box, I can send a message from the emulator to the virtual box. I just can't go emulator to emulator. So if you have virtual box and you're running that technique, let me stick this guy back up actually, then this particular app will work the same way, uh, but the DDMS is the only way I can send it a text message. So, so I'm going to get this guy up so I can test with this guy next. Um, but let's take a look. There's two examples. There's another one I haven't shown you yet as well that I can now show you on this one. Um, so these uh, are in here, SMS messaging source code examples, and there's a PDF file I'm going to show you in a few minutes. It's in here as well, and this one is in, just in case you haven't caught it yet, Android Application Development. Hold on one second. You certainly have to be patient here. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, so see, in the Android application development folder, in the uh, supplemental notes is where I'm finding this, and this one here is called SMS messaging, because I know that some of you will probably want to create your own fancy text message program, you know, change the background colors, I don't know, put some pictures in there, do some funny things with it. You can combine it with a content provider that we'll do after lunch, and you can have all sorts of nifty little activities happening with it. And it's very easy, actually. It's not too bad. So what you're looking at, and I'll make this a little bit bigger so you can sort of see it a little bit, is uh, if you unzip that folder, you're going to see inside of the SMS example, I believe it is in here. Let's just see real quick here. It's not in here. So there's an extra PDF file that's also loaded out here as well then that you'll need to download to get this message here uh, to get this particular uh, demonstration here it is here it's called Android SMS information 
So it's not a tutorial. Instead, it's um, I built the projects for you. This is one of my what I call my legacy older examples. It was done a couple years ago, before I started actually creating the tutorials. So this one's just an info file. So I'm going to lecture you to you on it, and then show you the live source code using both of those two examples, which is the uh, less interactive way of doing it, but uh, you still get the same information. You don't have to struggle with building it. Um, so let's talk about SMS for a second here. We just saw it live. What is it? Well, we know it's text messaging. You have, unless, unless you just scrolled out from under a rock, you've heard of text messaging, I hope. Uh, so it's one of the most used features of a mobile phone or tablet, and it's a great short way of communicating back and forth. We're going to use an intent. So let's take a look at here, and this is why we focus so much on intents. We're using intents for practically everything these days. Um, so make it a little bit bigger. So you can actually, I can go bigger. Look at that. I've gone real big. <laughs> so Because I want to show you the code. So everything is built in. So we're using an intent, and we're using the send and receive of your phone, actually, through our app, which is the way you're going to do it, unless you're going to write a new utility and become a phone, cell phone carrier. You're not going to essentially compete with Verizon or anybody else. You're going to essentially use their service. So you're piggybacking on their service. So we're creating an intent using an SM SMS intent, which is going to be equal to a new intent. And look at this action view. So we're going to action view instead of bringing up a dialer, instead of bringing up a text message, uh, excuse me, um, contact list, we're bringing up the services. The services doesn't actually have an interface to it. So we're not bringing up any text message, for example. Um, but we could. We could piggyback off of it and bring up, so we're text messaging out, but we're receiving through our app. So SMS intent dot set type, and the type that we're setting it is an MMS dash SMS. How are you gonna know that? Well, you're gonna pick it out of the, you're gonna pick it out of the a Google search or something to figure out. Well, what type of service am I running? And then we're gonna put the extras. The extras that we're gonna put is a text string that's going to be called the address and the address is going to be as an example some address that we're going to send it. We send it to the intent we also put the body so we have the address, we have the body the body of the message is going to be what we're typing into our app and then we're just setting it out. We're going to start the activity loads up the text messaging program. This is if you're going to use the text messaging program that's on the phone your app takes on a two, two text fields sends the stuff loads up, uh, creates the intent, loads up the activity, and sends it out using the services that are already available on the phone. <clears throat> so with an intent, you're specifying the above as a generic action view, and Android knows based on the specific actions that are associated, oops, get out of here, uh, the specified type that is meant for it, and that's built into the SMS activity. So the address and the SMS body basically um, are extras that you're putting in there to run with the intent. So you're sending information, and then you can wait for the uh, received broadcast, the, the message to come back from the intent if you want, uh, whether or not it was successful or failed. We're not actually looking for that. In our particular app, we're just blindly sending it and hoping it makes it there. So down uh, here on the bottom here, the following example is an activity that uses the above code launches an SMS application and when a button is pressed well, this is the SMS demo code that you're looking at right now so in this particular example it requires that you put a button there with an ID for button 1 and you include the main XML file in the project so this is our demo and this one here is called SMS send SMS which is what we were doing so it's a might be a slight variation. Let me take a, take a look. Actually, I have the code loaded, so I'm going to go back out here, go back and click on it. And if you get lost in the screen, just click on the Java button up here, the left hand side, brings you back to the Java code. And uh, now that my computer's done playing, uh, if I look at this example, this is the code for the program I was just running. And uh, it uses a button and it uses an edit text for the phone number and then an edit text for the text of the message. And lo and behold, it is uh, taking and we're putting on an on-click listener. The on-click listener on the button is going to send this message. So all of the code is essentially going to be on the on-click method. We're going to create a string for the phone number, a string for the text message. 
And then what we're going to do is going to say the SMS manager, SMS manager is going to be equal to an SMS dot get default. So what we're doing here is not necessarily using an intent for this. We're calling the SMS manager. So there are a couple of different variations on this theme. If we called an intent, we would be loading up the text messaging program that's in the content provider that's on the phone. Just like when we sent an intent from the contact and we went to the contact list, we went to the address book. That's one way of doing it. This app is actually interpreting, not using an intent, not loading it up. Rather, what it's doing, and let me open this back up here so we can see what file we're looking at, which is this one here in the SMS demo. It's creating a new instance of this manager that's going to manage the SMS messages for us. Getting the default settings, and then we're going to send a text message. Well, what are we going to send? We're going to send this message with the phone number and the SMS, and the SMS is the text from up here. It's the get text from the SMS field, and the phone number is the get text from the phone number field. So we're doing an SMS manager dot send text, send text message. So it's a method on the manager. So we're not running an intent. We're and then we're going to send up a message that says that the message was sent. Um, and then we're going to you know do some exception handling. If we have a failure here, we're going to say, hey, it failed. Please try again later. Which is the entire program. <laughs> That a little program that we were just looking at a few minutes ago, this is the entire code for it. Okay. It's not complicated. Okay. It's, in fact, for some of you who are struggling with the GPS stuff, this is the, the length of your code for your GPS stuff, too. <laughs> it's not that complicated. The problem with the GPS stuff is the overlays that you're running on top of the map view. But if we take a look at the um, XML file that goes along with it, we don't have very much there either. Uh, we have on a layout in main, we have a button, and which we had before. That's about it. The button here is going to start it off, and the button when we open up the program on an arm create is going to be that button that we sheet that we saw. In fact, if we run it here, let me uh, refresh your memory on what the interface looks like. Now I'm back to five. This might actually help some people who can't understand the ADB Connect. The ADB is we're connecting the ADB Manager, which is our Android device debugger. I can't remember what they call that thing anyway. But long story short, it connects the software from the Android engine to the virtual device. The same way as those emulators when we brought them up automatically get connected and then they get assigned to port. So we put the port forwarding on the emulator. In mine, I just set to 5555 which means once I use it, it'll just use it again and again, and it'll reset it on the same port instead of picking a brand new port. So if I run this demo again, you can kind of see when it first comes up, we have a button that shows up on the field on the screen, and the button says send. So here it is out here. That's my interface. And when I click on this button send, the button event is going to put up the to field, and then the to field is going to have another field down here, and then I'm going to have another button down here that says send. So in the interface, my main screen that comes up is just going to have a send button. That's the button, and this is going to be button send. So in my code, if I go back and look at my SMS code, I've got the button here that is going to be button send, but it's not my button. So let's see what's, what's going on here with this code, actually. Let's go back here. Oops, excuse me. Let's go back here. <coughs> back here. Uh, the send button is button send. It is the button send, by the way. So, okay, that's good. Button send, <coughs> which is going to initiate the first response. So, on the click, of the button, it's going to essentially, it, the, the button that's inside is also button send actually, it's going to the same um, in, same interface actually, um, using the same layout. So it's going to basically uh, get the information, this is the button send actually on the, on, the, on the layout, but anyway long story short, the button send on the second layout that appears 
is going to take the text that's from both of the two fields, add them to the both of the two string variables, send them as parameters to the method that we're doing here. So, and we're using a try and a catch on this. And if you were in the database, excuse me, if you were in the Java programming course, we know this is the standard exception handling. We want to do this one because just in case we don't get the SMS manager, because you can actually turn off the SMS manager on the phone so that you can't send outside. So programs can't use it, which means they can't use that feature, um, which is going to be a security setting. So if you install this, take the APK file, drag it over to your phone and install it, it should work through your SMS service. And it should load an instance of this, this object that's um, abstracted that's going to communicate with your SMS manager, which is part of your content provider information. Okay, very straightforward. Uh, interesting, but very straightforward. Uh, not too much. It's just a button here with a button click that's going to be on a linear layout that's going to run. And then the rest of it is essentially going to be running uh, through the SMS uh, activity. If we take a look at the next example here on the SMS example, <sighs> what I'm looking at is probably going to be the right example for what I was looking at before, which is going to have the right layout in it. <sighs> and it does have the right layout in it. And uh, we switched them around. Actually, I ran the SMS examples project instead of the SMS demo project for you. They're both actually, it looks like, variations of the same example. The layout, however, is different. So the layout that I was looking at originally, the one I was expecting to see was this one. This one matches this one, by the way, because there's two. There's the main screen, and then there's the button that goes to the second screen. So this one's going to have the uh, phone number. It's going to have the text view, the edit text label, which is going to be the inside view of the of the example. So I want to run this one because I want to see what this one actually looks like. Because I thought I was running the other one, unless I have labeled them incorrectly. No, nope, this one is definitely, okay, so I was showing you the correct example initially. <laughs> so this one is the second one. I believe next time I'm going to need to label these like one and two, so I know which one is which one. <laughs> Yes, this one here is the correct one for this code in here. So this is the SMS examples. This one puts it all on one screen. It does the same thing. It's all doing the same thing, very similar functionality. The only difference is the way the layout is, is, is created. So if we take a look at this layout, what I'm looking at then is uh, the same information that we've been looking at all weekend, text view, an edit view, a button, if I look at the code that's associated with it, let me make sure I open up the correct file now. We're looking at a very similar layout. Uh, actually, it's the same code. So let me go back up here and see what file this one is because this one should be different. Send activity. Send activity is using the same. Nope, this one's got the two buttons. The button send, the beginning button, and then the button click listener. No, this is the same code. It is the... Uh, one of them is using an intent, the other one's using the SSM manager. So the one that I originally showed you was the intent one. So now that I have this straightened out, I have them side by side now. They're both called the same thing, which is a problem. Example number one we just looked at is using SSM manager. Example number two, which is coming from SS, SMS demo, is using the intent. <laughs> So the intent, if I run this one, the intent, in fact, uh, should pick up and create a new intent, which is the code I just looked at, put into the body of the message the number and then the text itself, and then send the intent. So if you open up both of these two side by side, which I believe is probably the less confusing way of doing this. So I've got SMS demo opened up and let me just close these so I can have both of them loaded up here. The first tab, the SSF, SS, SSM demo, is the one using the intent. The second one down here, same file name, unfortunately, I need to rename this, is the one that's using the um, SSM manager. So we had our own screen that came up with the SSM manager. We don't have our own screen with a demo. So if I run this one, just, I don't have another emulator, so 
This one is just going to send. It's not going to receive, actually. It's just going to send. So if I put in a 5554, put something in here, test, get rid of the keyboard. If I could get rid of the keyboard. Uh, keyboard's not going away, is it? Keyboard's stuck. Okay. Uh, let's go back. Yep, there we go. This is the one that has a little pop up to so send a message. So this one actually should send it out using the content provider. So if this were a real device, it would actually send it out using the intent that was created. So long story short, play around with the examples, <laughs> load them up, send yourself some text messages. You've got both of them demonstrated here. This one isn't going to receive anything. This one's just not going to. Actually, none of them are receiving. They're both sending, by the way. Um, what we're looking at then is uh, the differences between using the intent and using the manager. So if I go back to the uh, PDF file here, this is the code for the intent. So programmatically sending an SMS message, you can actually hard code it. So you can send it within the, within the app without actually asking for the user input or output just by creating the intent. You also have to do something else here as well. You have to open up the manifest file. So in both of these two projects, we're going to notice that the manifest is changed. So we've added a permission. I'm just going to open up one of these guys because they're, they're both labeled the same. Uh, and they're both going to have the same code in it. We're using, uh, down here we have an activity for sending SMS activity. Okay, then we're going to have a permission that's up here. This is the one we're looking at. We have to add the permission. If we create the project, don't add the permission for the uh, send SMS. Everything will work. everything will look like it's working, but it won't work. It won't send anything. And um, this one is also uh, looks like it's uh, having uh, the intent code in it as well. So it's going to. You have to make sure you, you add the intent and also add both activities if you're going to run with multiple activities. We aren't, we're just running with one activity. And the one activity that we're doing uh, is opening up, as an example with the intent, opening up with intent you know, that's part of the action, action view of the phone. So we're running uh, like what we did yesterday with the intent examples. We're running a feature of the phone through the intent, which is more of a broadcast intent versus a one activity loading up another activity. Anyway, so those examples are meant for you to play around with. Um, experiment with it. The code is very simple. The basic concept being uh, in here is if you go down here further you can see the SSM manager. So both of them are in this PowerPoint if you um, are in this PDF file. Both code samples. And it's basically just dissecting out the code. So here's a piece of code snippet that's uh, just going to send the text. It's not going to use the manager, not going to use an intent. So the first argument is the send text message. So if you run this code it will just send in a message. Uh, no questions asked doesn't come back and do any error checking or anything. Which is what the, the these two programs are doing actually. They're just sending out blindly. No questions asked, just send it out. So, as long as the phone is uh, enabled for that. So, One problem with the above is that the user will not like the application which just sends out a message without prompting them for anything. So at least uh, the knowledge of something happened, getting some feedback. So here's an example where you can use a pending message. So the learning objective here is to kind of see the differences between what's going on. When we use the SMS manager object and we just send it out manually that way, or in the second technique that we looked at, we create an intent, send it out that way. We don't get any feedback. It's just throw it out, see who catches it. Like I don't know if that message is actually going to be received. So what we can do is create a different type of an intent that uses a pending intent message that is kind of like the variation of the intent that we used yesterday that received information back. But this one, instead of receiving information back, it's going to keep the intent open, watch the intent, see what the status is on the intent, and then return after a timeout or after a particular amount of time. So. What we're going to basically look at, and make, maybe make this a little bit smaller so you can see it all on one screen, is uh, looking at the message and then at least acknowledging what happened with the message. So to do this, we're going to create what's called a pending intent. And uh, none of the examples use the pending intent. Both of them are using the simplified version of it. 
So if the intent is a receive activity, it's a receiving activity, then you're going to be calling the activity back, which is what we did before. So once the message has been sent, it's going to be passed to a fourth argument, which is going to be a send text message method for the SMS object to send it back. So to receive the pending intent message, you're going to need to create what's called a broadcast receiver and then register it. Broadcast receivers we're going to see in the next example, probably after our lunch break, that's going to work with notifications. So we're going to pick up and we're going to send notifications by broadcasting them. So in the code example here, let me make this a little bit bigger, actually. This one here is going to be using a broadcast receiver and a pending intent. So instead of doing including app.intent or intent, we're including pending intent, which means we're going to keep it open, wait for it. It's going to send something back to say, hey, we were successful, or hey, we failed. That number doesn't exist or something, which is what your text messaging program actually does. And then a broadcast receiver, which is part of content. So content also has intent and intent filter in it as well. So here's an example of SMS fun. If you cut and paste this code and stick it into a project, it should work just fine. Just create a generic project for it. And I uh, don't know if the, uh, I'll have to see down below if the XML interface is here. It is, the XML interface is down here for receiving. If you'd like to do the receiving part of this, this code I believe should work because the other example is still working in the current APIs, although they're built on, let's say, two point something API, they're very old examples, but uh, we're gonna have a button to trigger it, same as before. Then we're gonna create a pending intent, sent PI for pending intent, because we wanna get the information that comes back, we want it to notify us that it was actually sent. And then we're going to have a string for the message sent. And then we're going to have a broadcast receiver. So we're going to use it to listen to the notification. So the notifications actually get sent. Whether or not we're going to pick up the notifications is a different story. In both of those examples, we got notifications that were sent back to us. We just didn't use them. We never acknowledged the receipt of the text. So on the on creates, we're going to do a create a pending intent by creating a sent PI is going to be equal to pending intent dot get broadcast this intent sent so it's looking for the sent tent sent message excuse me string that says sms underscore sent which is what's going to be broadcast back from the message manager sms manager that's being used whether we use it by a manager perspective or by an intent but we're going to use an intent in this particular case so then we have a couple buttons here that we're going to use to we're going to, we have one button that we're going to send. And then the other button is going to be a listener. We have put a button listener on here. And this is, again, an anonymous listener method implementation for the on click. Oh, it's using the SMS manager. So the SMS manager SMS is going to be equal to SMS manager dot get default. Create an SMS manager from the default SMS program. Your phone actually has a default setting for the SMS program. You can see it if you go through the settings stuff. Uh, and then send the text. We're going to hard code a text here, and we're sending the text um, in in the in the message without asking for the user to enter anything in. Then register the receiver. So for the broadcast receiver, we're registering the intent filter of sent. When we register the receiver, it says it's almost like an action listener. It sits there and says, "Well, wait. We think we're going to receive something. Something's going to come through the phone. A broadcast is going to come in. It says the message is sent." Which is kind of interesting because you can put a receiver out there to receive incoming calls. You can put a receiver out there to receive incoming text messages. So if you want your program to bypass, your app is going to bypass, the like Google Voice does, it's going to bypass the phone service or it's going to bypass the text messaging service that's set up as the default. You register a broadcast receiver, it will receive, it just sits out there and listens. It's like a service that goes, hey, did we get a call yet? Hey, we got a text message yet? When something comes in, it picks it up. Not to say that the default program is not also going to pick it up. It might, actually. Uh, depends on who's there first. And once it gets picked up, it's no longer being broadcasted, so only one receiver is going to get it, essentially, theoretically. Not a perfect science, but it does work. So we set it up, and then in order to uh, receive the results via the pending intent, we're going to need to register the broadcast receiver and pay attention to the various different values that's coming back. So when we say broadcast receiver is equal to new broadcast receiver, we've registered it. We've actually kind of started a service inside of our app, actually. So our activity is running this 
uh, lack of a better word, service that's out there looking for broadcasts. And it's looking for this one in particular. The one that matches the scent and the scent string that we created was the scent underscore uh, SMS underscore scent. So we can get all sorts of different messages if we go online and take a look at which what messages are being broadcasted. And then down here we can switch it and say, well, was the result okay? Was it uh, an error in the service? No PDU, the radio's <coughs> off. And then we can figure out what happened here. If the result was okay, then we can say SMS sent. It was sent. Okay, good deal. And then we can unregister the receiver. If we leave the receiver running, believe it or not, it burns the battery down on your phone eventually. It's a separate little service that's out there running that's checking, 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 checking. You have five different broadcast receivers out there checking, 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 you know, all constantly. Your phone is not going to get uh, really good performance out of it. The battery's not going to last that long. Eventually, you're going to have to shut down and put it on a charger or something. <laughs> so, uh, because uh, they do take up a little bit of memory. Okay, so receiving, you also have to put in a permission, and the permission is going to be receive SMS. So you have the permission to send and there's a permission to receive that you have to give your app. Why do these permissions exist? Because when you install the app, the installer is going to warn the user. Hey, this app wants to receive text messages. Are you going to allow it? This app wants to use the internet. This app wants to send text messages. And if you actually read it, it looks kind of scary after a while when it wants to do a bunch of stuff. And then you're wondering, well, what's this app going to do to my phone? So, All right, so you have to put a permission in the manifest file to actually receive it. And uh, you also need to tell Android that you want to handle the incoming SMS messages. So to do this, you have to actually have an intent filter, uh, which tells Android to launch a specific class when an SMS actually comes in. So you can bypass, if you use this code here, you can actually bypass your text messaging program on your phone. When a new text comes in, your app is going to answer the text message, which is what this is going to do here. Um, so this is done in the Android manifest by registering the intent filter. The intent filter is out there looking to see what's going to go, what's going to happen, and uh, out there in the Android world, and it's going to say, "Hey, telephony." The provider is going to be telephony dot SMS received, which brings up the content provider, which we haven't actually gotten into yet, but they're called content providers because they provide things, and they provide us the ability to share apps and to build, share content. So this, this afternoon is about content providers. Um, so here's the full XML uh, for the Android manifest. If you're going to copy and paste it and use it into an example, this should work, actually. I'm surprised I didn't actually copy and paste it and put it in. Uh, it probably was there. I just haven't found it yet. Uh, but long story short, this will allow you to receive as well as send text. Um, so in this example here, SMS fund receive isn't an activity. It's a broadcast receiver. So when you load it up, nothing happens. Instead, a new text comes in and your app opens up because <laughs> it's a broadcast receiver. So in terms of this, this will not run as an SMS message comes in. This will run when an SMS message comes in. You can't see, uh, you, we, cannot, we can see it if we're doing something based on a message, perhaps launching an activity or something like that, then we can actually see it. So here's the code for the on receive. So in your broadcast receiver, which isn't going to run, it's just going to sit there, but it's going to be launched through the intent of your app. The SMS fund receiver extends broadcast receiver, so nothing's going to happen on the screen when this intent loads, by the way. We're just going to see the receiver. When the receiver is created, it's going to create an instance of this, and this sort of runs like a server a service, actually. Get the bundle from the intent. The bundle is going to be the message we're waiting for what we're going to receive. Create an, and this is just a generic object that's going to be an object that's going to get the bundle because we're going to get a bunch of stuff. We're going to get telephone calls that came in, low battery indicators, um, you know, a bunch of you know, sensors. Uh, all this information is going to be broadcast constantly. And we're going to receive a bunch of crap, so we're going to look for the one we want. And we're going to create a, uh, a queue of strings for the messages that come in for the SMS. So SMS message we're going to take the PDUS, which is the generic object that's created from the bundle, get the length of it, and then work with it to see which ones of these are going to be text messages. So message I is going to be an SMS message dot create from here. And then we're going to log the message in the log system for testing purposes if you run this. 
you'll see the messages that come in there along with the address if you could actually send to the emulator. And what you can send to the emulator actually, you can send it through the DDMS. So if you're running the DDMS and you're going to communicate with the emulator, you'll send it, the emulator app will write to the log, hey, I received it, which is how you're going to know that the message is actually received. And so then uh, based on uh, the message itself, we're going to display the original message that contains this code here. And then uh, we're going to launch the activity and pass the data back to it. So the intent is going to be a new intent. New intent is going to be secret message dot class, which is going to be another class that's going to essentially look at the message that came through. Add some flags for the intent. The flag is going to be a new task, activity new task, because okay, we're creating a new task out of this. And uh, here's our secret message down here that we're going to run, which is going to be the object that's going to be created by the intent or used by the intent. So. Broadcast message is going to basically create its own intent, and the intent is going to load up this activity. And this activity is going to say, "Hey, we got this message. It came through. Here's the message. We picked it up from the. We intercepted the text message that got sent to you. We picked it up in the app, and here's your secret message that came through. So, in looking at that, um, here's the code that's going to launch the secret message. So, it's going to be a message that's going to show up. So, we have to." Um, the secret message activity has to be registered because it's going to be another activity that we're going to launch through an intent. So we're going to put it in the manifest. And then here's the code for it. Looking at nothing more than getting the extras. So bundle extras, get intent dot get extras. We're going to set the address and the message. And then we're going to put it in a text view, essentially. So uh, you'll see you'll have to create uh, in the XML file. We'll have a couple of text views. We have two text views that the secret message is going to come into. And then uh, the app should essentially pick up and broadcast uh, any message that's broadcast. It should be received and then picked up and then processed through the secret message method that's created by another intent. So we have a main activity that creates a broadcast receiver. It sits out there and waits. And the broadcast receiver, upon receipt of something, starts its own intent. And its own intent loads up the information that's received and passes it. So we have the information passing from the broadcast receiver through an intent to open up another activity. So the long story short, it's um, everybody working together <laughs> through intents. You can also do it. Um, it's hard to not use intents if you're going to use a broadcast receiver because that's essentially it works better that way, works well that way and then you're not recreating data, you're just passing the information between the broadcast receiver and an intent. And you're working with the bundle. Anyway, another uh, example that you can cut and paste and put in, uh, you have to recreate it yourself actually. The XML files are given for you as well as the class code. Uh, you'll have to create a new project for it. And you'll have to make sure you get the um, all the pieces in the manifest correct. Because you also need, if you want to cheat sheet it, you could actually pull the manifest out of one of these two examples here. and. Uh, Add the receiver because this is going to be sent. You also have to add the <coughs> permission to receive and modify one of these examples. It probably would work for you if you cut and pasted the code and put it in there. I'm going to say it probably does work actually. Um, and I'm surprised I didn't do that actually already, unless I just didn't find it somewhere. So, believe it or not, that's how complicated it's not very complicated at all. I think it's pretty easy actually. That's how easy it is to use a text messaging in an app. So, you got to decide. Most people will go the intent route because it's a little bit more functional for sending and receiving. But for just sending, the you know SMS manager route is simple. It's a couple lines of code. You can send a text message right from your program. So not that complicated. OK, so I'm looking at the time, and I'm thinking it's about lunchtime. So I'm going to end this video here.